Great. Well, thanks again, Eric, for the opportunity to uh, speak about my own experience with the Bioptogen OCT imaging. I am a corneal and refractive surgeon at Baskin Palmer Eye Institute, and I'm the medical director of the Ophthalmic Biophysics Center. I first became interested in anterior segment OCT imaging uh, because of the types of uh, corneal surgery that I perform. This is the first case, a 33-year-old male with keratoconus, and we were able to image um, many of the steps of the, the surgery sort of to help us understand what exactly is going on and, and where and how we can improve this procedure. So this is a scan preoperatively of a patient with keratoconus, and here you can see that we can get volumetric data as well. So this is sort of real-time imaging. On the right-hand side, we have the surgeon's view of the cornea, and we can scan the cornea um, with really uh, quick acquisition time, and obviously non-contact. Then we can magnify our view uh, in any one of these cuts uh, and see what our uh, thickness is of the cornea and identify what part of the cornea is the thinnest and where. In the DALC surgery, we perform partial thickness trephination, and this is uh, after partial thickness trephination. And again, here you can see that we still have a fair amount of stroma left behind before uh, we're left with decimase membrane and endothelium only. So here we have the scan. And here we have the high magnification where I can see, yeah, I still have 192 microns left um, before I hit the decimase. So this is a tricky part of the DALC surgery and what I call the blind part of the surgery where a needle is introduced into the residual 192 microns of stroma. And the goal of this part of the procedure is to insert the tip of the needle so that it's just pre-decimase membrane without perforating through decimase membrane, inject air to get a detachment of decimase membrane and endothelium. And as you can imagine, this part is quite delicate um, and somewhat blind, so wouldn't it be nice to have an imaging modality intraoperatively um, where we could be assisted in this part of the procedure? So here we have a high magnification of the needle into the stroma in this portion of the procedure. And again, this is something that we're studying under IRB approval, um, not yet indicated um, with a, a bioptogen device, uh, but something um, where I believe that there's a need in my particular field. So then we have the next step where we inject air and here we can see that there's uh, opacity or uh, intense signal. And as it, again, as you can imagine, after this portion, when we look at the cornea, our view is obscured. So we really can't tell by looking at the cornea after the air is injected whether or not decimase is detached or still attached. Again, here we go with our volumetric scan. And here... Um, Again, because of the, the depth of penetration and sort of optimizing our working distance, if we actually scan deeper into the anterior chamber, we'll be able to get a sense of whether our decimase is detached or still attached. Here we have dissection of our residual stroma, and again, we have a beautiful uh, detached intact decimase membrane. And again, we can confirm that not only um, you know visually, but by our OCT imaging. And we can again drop a cursor and measure um, the uniform decimates membrane and endothelium that we have at this point of the procedure. Here is after um, the stroma of the donor tissue is sutured into place, and um, on top of our uh, recipient decimase and endothelium. Here, if we have irregularity, we may want to fill the anterior chamber with air or saline to help get rid of these wrinkles on the posterior decimase membrane. This is a case of a patient who underwent uh, attempted DALC where there was a perforation through decimase membrane, abort aborted DALC and uh, penetrating keratoplasty. And this is uh, an interesting OCT image where you can see that there's actually ruptured or penetration of the decimase membrane. And here 
when we obtain the OCT imaging, you can see that all looks good up until about here. And now we can see that, in fact, there begins to be this perforation and scroll of decimase membrane um, where there's penetration and rupture of decimase. So in that case, we proceeded with penetrating keratoplasty because of the rupture. And here's a high magnification, a uh, nice view of the rupture and scrolled decimase membrane. So uh, the results of imaging um, with OCT of our DALC uh, procedures were that we were able to uh, visualize with OCT the preparation steps, the trephination, depth, and needle location. Um, we were able to monitor the depth of the stromal dissection during preparation and visualize uh, graft attachment to the decimase membrane. How about DSEC? DSEC surgery, uh, again, as I mentioned, is a common um, procedure for endothelial cell replacement. And um, one of the problems with DSEC surgery and one of the most common complications that we see is graft detachment postoperatively. So how can we make this procedure better and minimize that complication? Well, here is a preoperative scan of a patient with Fuchs dystrophy. Here you can see that the cornea is quite thick, the epithelium is thick, and then if you actually measure decimase membrane, you can see that decimase membrane is thickened as well, along with guttata on the endothelial surface. Here we have uh, a DSEC donor tissue. So with DSEC surgery, we strip the diseased decimase membrane and endothelium. We remove it from the recipient eye, and we replace it with uh, a donor endothelial cell layer and decimase and some stroma. So this is the scan uh, of the decimase, uh, of the donor tissue inside of the eye. And here it's free floating in the anterior chamber, and here you can see it sitting on top of the iris. We can measure the thickness of the donor tissue, and after the donor uh, tissue is placed and air is filled into the eye, you can see also with the OCT we can, can confirm postoperatively that our donor tissue is attached without interface fluid. So we think that if the patient uh, um, has interface fluid uh, uh, after the surgery, that perhaps that's a risk factor for uh, detachment postoperatively. And here, again, we can measure. Now we have a much thicker cornea because, again, we've placed our donor tissue uh, in, in the eye. So um, imaging of DSEC with supine OCT allows us to uh, look at the condition of the donor endothelial lenticule and monitor the adhesion to the recipient. Finally, DMEC, or decimase membrane endothelial keratoplasty, is what's hot in corneal surgery these days. So rather than uh, replacing decimase and endothelium with a DSEC lenticule, where we have stroma involved, now um, some surgeons are starting to replace only decimase membrane and endothelium without any uh, donor stroma attached. As you can imagine, harvesting decimase membrane and endothelium alone can be tricky. And this is a study that we did at Baskin Palmer looking at using OCT to help us with our DMEC graft preparation. Here we have a donor cornea that's flipped upside down, so we're uh, looking on, on endothelial uh, cells. And the technique is that we're going to insert a needle, just pre-decimase membrane, inject air, and try to get a nice big bubble or detachment of decimase and endothelial cells alone. So here is our first attempt. Here you can see that the needle is um, visualized here. Here we have the uh, needle profile and the needle tip. So again, it's a beveled needle, and uh, here you can imagine the bevel and the tip of the needle. So remember now the endothelial cell layer is here, and we're still quite far. So um, using this image, we can say, all right, we're going to repass or advance the needle location two to push it 
closer towards decimase membrane so that we can get a good big bubble once we inject air. So now we're much closer to decimase membrane. We can inject air and we get this nice big bubble. So endothelium and decimase comes off and here you can see it very, very nicely um, on the OCT. So uh, I'd like to uh, thank my collaborators at Baskin Palmer who are working on this project and the support that we've received and uh, thank you for your attention.